Hey YouTube, Master781. So, today on the table, Craspin LT1000. Got the 16 horsepower Kohler engine. What's up with it? Well, I'm not sure. So, a friend of mine does estate cleanouts, and uh, this was part of the estate. He is more of a scrapper, so he didn't really ask questions. He kind of took it and then got it home and then said, hey, you know, this thing is actually kind of in pretty good shape. Let me call my buddy Hester and see if he wants it. So I did, and I do, and it's mine. Um, that being said, it does run, and runs pretty well. Uh, it mo it will mow. I engage the blades. The you know, kind of looking around, see we're missing a little chunk out of the tube. And the only other thing I noticed is right over here, the gas tank. I don't know if you guys see that crack right there. But don't know if that is leaking. I bet it is. So just got to give this thing the once over. See what it needs, if it needs anything. And uh, go from there. So as usual with these sort of things, the first place I start, it looks like we might have some grass or a mouse house underneath this cover. So we start getting things off and then we can also see if uh, that tank is leaking by sloshing the fuel around. And two, three, it's bolts later. Get that up, and I'm giving it the tilt. Got the fuel sitting right there. And shockingly, it's not leaking. Interesting. Look at how scuzzy, though. I mean, this thing, that needs a bath like nobody's business. Well, I'm just kind of rolling this around because the, there is a crack on this side, too. And, uh-oh. Yep. She needs a fuel tank. Honestly, don't. I, I would have been surprised if it didn't leak. Um, and even if it didn't, it wasn't gonna wasn't gonna stay good for long. So next, let's get this cover blown off and taken off. See how bad the air filter's looking? Well, not the worst. Pre filter's dusty, but that's what it's there for. So to get this cover off, we got. One bolt here, another one there. I don't think there's any hiding behind the air filter. One 10 mil here. I believe these two 10 mils have to come out, but we will confirm that when the cover comes off. There's so another one here and another one there. Now this, somebody added, and they did a nice job of it actually, a tachometer. And uh, unfortunately it doesn't work anymore. Is it an hour meter or a tachometer? Well, I think it might be both. But anyway, yeah, that's not factory. So let's see what's underneath. Oh, that's surprising. It's actually pretty clean. Good. Nothing, no surprises under there. Looks like a mouse chewed on. There was a mouse nest here at one point. We will say that. This is kind of swollen. No, repaired. All right, somebody... Fix that, and someone fix that. Sweet, it makes our jobs easier. <clears throat> All right, I'm just gonna give this a quick blowout, put the cover back on, and uh, move on. So upon closer inspection, this filter is actually jam-packed with dirt. I don't know if you can see it between the pleats there, but uh, yeah, garbage. So I think I'm going to uh, see if I have any gas tanks, but next I'd like to drop the bowl on this. Like I said, it's running good and even idled, but I do want to uh, look for looking sake and uh, probably throw a better fuel filter on there than the Chinesium Special. All right, it looks like somebody wire tied the wire right around where we need to stick the wrench. So, disconnect, tuck that under, and can we fit? What is that? What size is that? Yep, half inch. Hopefully I'm not blocking you guys too awful bad. And we'll just let that drip for a second. All right. Want to take a peek before we go uh, go crazy here? 
and got the solenoid out of there. So a lot of that crap is just what was on the solenoid. I'm looking for water mainly, and also it is uh, yellow. And it doesn't smell the best, but uh, take a look at the bowl here. Definitely a little bit of gel, a little bit of crap. So I'd say it was a good thing we dropped it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to let a little bit of fuel flow through just to uh, flush out what was in the line. And I think we should be good to go. And there's actually not that much fuel left in the tank, which is good because, you know, we do need to uh, change out the tank. So just a little uh, word of advice to the people out there that get tractors like this that they might be flipping or giving to another friend or whatever fill the tank because i <laughs> that's why i'm in the habit of checking them is i've had gas tanks just like this have holes you know up here behind where you can't see you know chewed by squirrels or mice or chipmunks or cracks and you know you just kind of throw a, a quart of gas in it and you're you know oh yeah it runs fine runs great here you go have a good day and uh next time they go to mow they fill it up to the tippy top and it's pouring out everywhere it happened to me so that's why i look now that that's back together what do you say we lift this thing up and uh drop the deck take a look at the drive pulleys and the deck pulleys all right so aside from that one doesn't sound bad Aside from the, uh, you know, massive amount of dried, clumpy grass. Let's see. Like, quiet as a mouse. <laughs> no, so, definitely needs this pulley. Let's see the uh, spindles. That one's quiet. And what about this guy? Break off. Might as well just take the spring, huh? Yeah. Take the spring off. It's easier for people who don't have three arms. Just gently push the belt away and this one doesn't feel good at all. I can't even get that to, I mean, I can get it to move. I engaged, ah, wow. I engaged these blades. So I'm a little surprised, but um, should I be really? It was a free mower. So let's flip this thing over. I'm sorry, but before I actually flip this thing over, take a look at this. This grass has been there so long, it's like composting. And I'm right here, right behind the tensioner. And it's like just solid. There's little flies everywhere. Oh, it drives me crazy. Anyway. All right, so to give you guys the top side view, right now the brake is off, the spring's still off. And that is just stiff as a board. I mean, I imagine under belt tension this will spin but the thing must be burning up i'll show you the underside now part of me was hoping it was just going to be a bent blade but uh and obviously i got leverage on my side here and it feels like crick 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 you know you can just feel these so the bearings are shot no two ways about it so let me show you how i rebuild these spindles step one is of course take these three t30 torx bolts take those right out hopefully they cooperate if not improvise once that cover is out of the way you got to get this big nut off and uh, without an impact it can be very difficult so the easiest way to get this nut off I'm going to show you right now hey, Hester hey it's your buddy wait no wait we went to kindergarten together, remember? Yeah. Well, anyway, anyway, I got a, a, a mower deck with a spindle bolt that just will not come off. Are you busy? Hello? Hello? So, yeah, the uh, easiest method is to have somebody else deal with it. 
But if you are somebody else, the somebody else that always gets called upon by other people, all you need is a 7 8 and an impact wrench. If you don't have one, wedge a piece of wood underneath the deck with the blade and then put a big ass breaker bar on it and pray. Fortunately, they generally don't fight. Unless they do. So now I'm just gonna put the uh, nut back on and tap a little bit with a brass hammer. Just trying to get this. There, it's coming off. Yikes! It's really only supposed to sit there, too. There we go. Yep. So, check this out while you have it off. Make sure those splines look nice and decent. There is a little spacer right here that's coming off too. I'm actually going to blow this out real quick. Just so you guys can see better. Wow. Let me show you this. So I was wondering why that came off so tough. Look at these teeth. It's like somebody clocked the pulley at one point. And now come down and look at the splines. It's like they hammered it straight down on a tooth. Because normally, it's kind of like, you know, it finds its own home. See, now that's proper. So, I don't know if someone was having a bad day or what, but moving on. So once you're at this point, there's no real uh, secret to finishing up. You just kind of put the nut back on. Try to keep it level with the shaft, and you're just gonna beat the spindle out of the old bearings. And we're getting towards the end now. And we're out. And when you leave the blade on, it sort of comes out all in one piece. This is the bottom bearing, and look at this. Yeah. So, that was the problem. Top one feels actually really nice, but we're going to change it anyway, because we're in here and we've been hammering. So, to the vise. So, this bolt is actually being quite recalcitrant here. Usually... The little guy will do it. Here's the big guns. See? Now, was that so hard? So, if you guys don't have a bench grinder or, you know, a wire wheel or something like I have here, just take some sandpaper or a file and just sort of clean up all this rust and crap because we need this bearing to slide off of this spindle. And once you're done polishing your shaft, come back to the vise. And there's a few ways to go about this. I'm gonna try the easiest way first, which is clamp down just on the bearing. Make sure you're not getting the bottom bit. Nice and tight. And with any luck, a couple of whacks and this will pop right out. No luck at all. So moving on to the next level of escalation, we have a bearing splitter. And if you guys don't want to go through all of this uh, hustle and bustle, Go online and just buy a whole spindle assembly. They're relatively cheap. They're readily available. I just, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment. And uh, I happen to have these bearings in stock. And it's significantly cheaper to rebuild them. But it um, comes with a price, right? Price of labor or the price of a spindle. So let me get this tighten down and tightening this down alone might be enough to just uh, pop that bearing free well, let's see if she plays nice well, 
it feels like it's popping. Yeah, it's opening. All right. Eventually, we're just going to be bottomed out on the shaft, so. But you don't want to be. You want to still have some, some free play there. So I'm going to back off just a hair. Make sure. Okay, yeah. So we weren't there yet. But now, we're going to go back to the vise. I'll make sure you got some wiggle room in there. And this should just pop right out now. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, it's not actually on there that tight. It's supposed to just slide on. It's just rust jacking and, you know, karma. That's what's keeping it on. I just ran that real quick under the wire wheel to get it cleaned up. So I've seen this before. Some of these have a felt, you know, pad in there that's separating. I don't put that back in. And my reasoning is, number one, most of them, they disintegrate and they, uh, they're not there anymore, so they can't be doing much good. And number two, I think it holds moisture, and it will add to the rust jacking that happens in there. So, getting ready to put your uh, new bearing on, take your favorite cleaner, and just spray a little bit on there. And the new bearing is a 6204-2RS. Drop this on. And the last tricky part can be pressing this new bearing on. Easiest way I've found is take a pipe that fits the inner race, nice and snug, and just give it a couple of wax. And that's it. As far as the top bearing, I just got a half inch extension with I think a three quarter socket, which will fit right up inside. I'm just gonna give this a couple taps. And that's that. And the top bearing part number is 6203RZ. Drop right in. Sometimes they just fall into place. <clears throat> now, some of you guys are wondering why I would change the top bearing if it sounded fine. So, I guess it comes down to my own personal preference. You guys know I'm going to drop this spindle instantly, right? Okay. So, a couple of reasons. One, in my mind, they're cut from the same cloth. They are both of equal age. Let me give that a couple of taps. So like I was saying, they're both the same age as far as I know. And number two, this bottom bearing is basically frozen solid. And whoever had this was mowing like that. So who knows how hot that bottom one got. You guys are going to let me put this on without the spacer, weren't you? Nice friends. So who knows how hot this spindle got and if that heat traveled up and got to that top bearing, you know, how much grease is in there? How good is the grease? It takes an extra two seconds and it's a dollar for the bearing. So, you know, it's a no brainer in my head. But... And suck this down to 13 Ugga Duggas. Might have overshot it, but feels much better now. These blades aren't the worst, but I am going to throw a nice quick edge on both of them, just because why not? All right, just waiting for that uh, new pulley, and that will sort the deck. So let's take a peek underneath. Let these pull. Oh, wow. All right, so she needs a drive belt. How's everything else looking? Give the pulleys a... That actually feels pretty good. All right, so usually the pulleys are the problem, but this time it's the belt. Excellent. So let me get some parts ordered up, and we'll uh, 
carry on. And as it so happens, I think I have the correct pulley on hand for this. <clears throat> so let's take this off and see. World's longest bolt. All right, there is a washer on top. And I'm just gonna double check that it has the same standoff, and it does. It's slightly different on the outside, but the inside is the same. For some reason, parts are hard to find on this thing, as far as parts diagrams. I mean, they made millions of these things, so don't get me wrong. You will find the parts. It's just uh, looking up the model number, I'm coming up with nothing on jack small engines and parts tree and all the usual places I look. And that's gonna do us. Sweet. Yeah, listen to that. So call me a hoarder, call me what you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. But what I do <laughs> when I have these ones, I pound out the centerpiece because uh, it has saved my butt so many times when I get a pulley that's correct all the way around, except they have the wrong standoff. So just something I do, keep it in mind. In keeping with the same theme of difficulty, I need to get this belt off and actually measure it to make 100% sure I'll be getting the correct belt. So hopefully this pulley will just slide right off. Yeah, right. Wishful thinking. Hey! That didn't feel like it was going to work. So how's that looking, huh? Wasn't long for the world. So what I usually do, because I'm alone, is I'll string this up in the vise, put a screwdriver in, pull it up taut, and then uh, take a measurement and times that by two. One of you guys want to hold the other end. Looks like we're at exactly 40, which would mean I want something around 80. So now I'm going to go look up general belts for Craftsman LT1000s and see if any of the measurements match up to mine. And just went out to my local parts store, got a couple of filters and what is hopefully the right belt. And I actually had a gas tank for this in stock. I actually, I, I usually keep one, but I used it last, I ordered one. And then uh, I ended up throwing my used one in the last one I needed. But anyway, I digress. Let's see if that belt is right. Let me just get them both set up in the vise, give them a tug. And sure enough, that is proper. I believe it was 82 inches, which is what this is listed at, but I mean, I don't know. We saw it was 40, but that's why I said when you look them up, just look for a number that's close and generally that's the one you're going to go with. So part number for this, I'm going to put it right here. So I don't know how well you're going to see, but there's honestly not much to see. I'm just kind of tucking the belt straight over the fan. And once you're over it, you got to sneak in front and your little metal keepers, we'll call them, in the front. So... That's on there. Gonna sneak this forward onto the pulley. And I did put a little bit of lube inside. Also, there was um, traces of copper anti-seize, so it's probably why it didn't fight me coming off. Keep the belt tight. So it gets past the keepers. What am I hitting here? Yeah, I'm in the keyway. Sorry, this is why I said it's not much to look at because it's just me struggling upside down. I'm good. 
I'm doing this all wrong. Time out. So I actually did have it right. It just looks wrong. Around there. Around that, that's a keeper, that's a keeper. The little tab here is a keeper. And then you gotta make sure you have it inside this bracket. So now I'm gonna push the release. And perfect. And then don't forget to sock down your crank pulley. That ain't going anywhere. So now we're ready to slide the deck back underneath because we're done with that. And uh, by the way, the fuel that I drained out of this thing, when it's settled, you can see that water in the bottom. So unfortunately, we do have to drain the carb again. That's what you get for being cheap. So let's get that deck tucked under. Actually, before I get that tucked under, I think I'm going to try and patch this piece right here and I have an idea of how I want to do it all right so it's not a huge um okay yeah it is kind of huge but it's not a huge um problem see all I need to bridge is that so I have these pieces of galvanized metal and I think what I'm going to do is sort of catch this bolt hole and just kind of go like that because all we need to do is make it deflect so I'm just trying to decide if it's smarter to go I'm actually going to go on the outside and uh why because that's what I'm choosing to do so let me get that popped out and see if we can get this mocked up and that's going to work a lot nicer and this little gap down here is going to be taken up by the mower deck I'll show you once I throw it on there now some of you guys are going boo that looks like crap well be patient watch this ha how's that huh some of you are saying, that still looks like crap. Well, guys, if I make it look too good, someone's going to steal it. And while the paint's drying, we can go ahead and uh, delete this leaky fuel tank. <clears throat> Come on. It's, I mean, there's honestly no love lost here. This is uh, preventive maintenance at its best, if anything. Also gonna change this fuel filter because I have no idea who made it. And uh, I just don't trust the cheap fuel filters anymore. Been burned too many times. And for those of you wondering which ones I do use, I use the rotary ones. Um, I think it's 2010352 is the number. And if it isn't, I'll correct myself right here. But uh, yeah. Uh, T-Bone over at Rayleigh's Garage, he turned me on to these, and uh, they've been fantastic, honestly, for every application I've tried them for. So, let's grab the new tank. I don't know the best angle to get you guys at where you're not going to be staring at my elbow or staring at my big head, but... Just know that I always try to keep you guys in mind whenever I do these these things. I already blew this line out. I'm gonna take the bowl off and drain that real quick. See, look at that. Just from sitting here in between me cleaning it, not only did a little bit of crap come through, but there's water sitting right at the bottom. So don't be like me, don't be lazy. Empty out the fuel every time, drain it out, blow out the lines. All right, new air filter on. Got this nice premium intake on. Just about ready to throw some fuel into it and make sure she still runs. It was running before, so it better. Otherwise, I did something wrong. Place your bets. All right, got some fresh fuel in it. Oil is still full. Never actually drained it, so Let's see what happens. She idles.
Beautiful, just beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna throw some grease in the uh, spindles and the bearings real quick. And I've been dying to give this thing a bath. And I know some of you are too. Some people love it when I do the uh, before and afters with the pressure washer. Let me know if you appreciate it or you wish I'd uh, cut it short and stick to the meat and potatoes. Take care of one last thing that drives me crazy. <sighs> just OCD, it's just little things. Big things take care of themselves, but the little things make me smile. Get ready for it, folks. About to turn this hog's ear into a silk purse. Or something close to it, hopefully. And bibbity bobbity boo look at that she cleaned up nice i even gave her some time to dry so you guys can see it's not just the water rims came out perfect they usually clean up nice engine bay looks fantastic the new gas tank helps a lot actually but yeah what do you think of this one guys another one in the books cleaned up under there well I want to thank you all again for liking, watching, commenting, subscribing, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.